Hey, what's going on everyone? This past weekend, I received a lovely Discord message from our beloved maintainers of MooOS saying that MooOS Pixie has arrived and with it comes many changes that have been made to improve quality of life. Users, app developers, theme creators, and MooOS developers. So lots of changes here, lots of cool additions. So let's dive into what's new and how to rock this new update on our handhelds. So first things first, they have this warning here about ensuring we back up and remove any themes and retro art configurations that might be on your secondary SD card. I don't believe that's something that I have configured, but uh, definitely something to take a look at. Uh, and in general, when jumping up to a new major version of a custom firmware or any firmware for that matter, always good to back up your most critical stuff. So I'm not too, too worried because I now have sync thing going that backups all my saves and states to a server in my house. So if something gets wiped away, I might have to do a little bit of retro art reconfiguration, might have to re-download a couple of themes, but overall I'm good to go on that. So good safety note to start us off. Big shout out to the MooOS team and especially these release contributors here for their amazing work on this. And on the notable changes end, one really big one here is MooOS console mode, where if you plug in an HDMI cable and power it on, you'll get a full screen experience, which as you've seen in my previous videos, the console experience has been a little bit, just kind of a stretched version of the handheld experience and has been a little bit clunky feeling I wouldn't really recommend it at the time so I'm very curious to try that out. We've got enhanced menu navigation and content explorer performance so I'm curious what that's about like do we have kind of some newly-esque uh, smoother animations there. Uh, improved theme structure and support for more resolutions and customization. Uh, the resolutions need was highlighted on the RG34XX where we had that slightly wider GBA style screen and many themes did not support it and it's definitely good to have more resolution support going on here especially if they're going to have a big hype on this console mode here. Of course, the usual multitude of fixes and performance improvements across the front and back end to improve stability and functionality. Another cool one here we're kind of borrowing from other firmwares is uh, Favorites is now called Collections with subfolder support. So now we can further organize our sometimes massive libraries into favorite Sega titles and favorite arcade games and favorite 2D platformers and all that good stuff, which is sweet. And significant groundwork completed to better support future devices, which is awesome. Uh, they later mentioned that uh, someone is working on porting to the Trim UI brick, which is super cool, which would be the first non Ambernate device to get MooOS. So that's a huge deal. Definitely curious to see when that happens. But the more portable we can make the core of MooOS and make it more translatable to future Ambernate devices or even ones from other manufacturers, that's a huge deal. So big kudos to the devs there. So again, they want us to back up our content and uh, make sure to back up or remove any themes or retro art configs on SD2. So we will make sure we do that before we do our update here. And then when we go into here, we can of course download it from the MooOS site. But first on this few last words here, some pretty cool things were mentioned, notably that the apps channel is popping off a bit, particularly Wangunu 1312's amazing Bluetooth app. Now I've heard about this Bluetooth app and essentially this is the official nod from the MooOS lead developer saying, yeah, you guys want Bluetooth support? Well, it's here and I say it's amazing. And so I think it's about time we try out this Bluetooth app because that has been one of the biggest things that all of you newly fans in the comments have been saying that MooOS would be absolutely perfect if it just had Bluetooth support or a little better console support. And so if we've got both Bluetooth and a console TV mode thing, I think we might have a real winner in our hands here. So I'm super excited. And speaking of the apps channel, let's just take a look here and see what else is trending. And yeah, sure enough, we've got Art Scraper. That's a newly feature we've been looking for. Audio Player, that's cool. There's the Bluetooth app. Super cool down here. Web Browser and YouTube Player. <laughs> what? That's amazing. Uh, and then yeah, other good things like, yeah, gamepad test, a day-night temperature toggle, Wi-Fi hotspot? That's cool. As you can tell, I haven't been in here in a while, and there are some really cool apps people are creating here. So thank you to all of the MooOS community. It is just such a cool custom firmware for so many reasons, but especially the community that just rallies together to yeah patch each other's themes to have supported resolutions for new handhelds when they come out, create sick apps like this, or yeah, just take it upon yourself to 
add Bluetooth support or YouTube support, I think I'm gonna be grabbing this YouTube app over here. And we're also gonna be grabbing, of course, the Bluetooth app to properly try out. So let's open up those GitHubs. And with that, let's head into downloading mode. So MooOS, download latest here. And here is MooOS 2502.0 Pixie. Let's grab it from GoFile, cause why not? I think I usually grab it from GoFile. And I think I'll be upgrading my beloved RG35XX SP. As you know, I've covered it so much on this channel. And why stop now? <laughs> Let's further move us updates with it, shall we? So we'll let that download. And while that goes, we'll grab our CTube. Watch YouTube videos on MooOS. I'm very curious to try this out. Here's our installation steps. Oh, cool. Apparently it used to require an API key. It no longer does. So I'm very glad about that. I'll grab the Pixie version. Cool. Wow. Pixie support is added. That's sick. Oh my gosh, it's the same person that made the Bluetooth app. You are popping off. You are doing some lit service to your MooOS community. Thank you very much. We'll now grab your Bluetooth app, which has... Wait a sec. The day Pixie was announced, added Pixie support. Well done. Well done. Save that. All right, the update file is now on our first SD card. It was really weird getting Windows to read either of my SD cards, so I ended up just tossing this into my Mac and copying it over. I copied it over as the .image.gzip file, so I think the archive updater tool can handle that, but we're gonna find out real soon here. A nope. <laughs> One second. There we go, now that we've unzipped that update file, let's try that again. All right, applications, archive manager. What the heck am I doing wrong? So for some reason, I thought this was going to be an in-place update using the archive manager, but everyone on Discord is talking about just doing a fresh reflash of their SD card one. And so that's what we're doing now using good old Belena Etcher. And so we'll let that finish and then we'll pick up from the SP. There we go. Now this guy is all flashed with the latest properly. He's ready for our first boot. Is that a flat logo? Look, they flattened the logo on the full buzz buzz. This already looks a little, little different than usual. Ooh, see the rounding on the, uh, on the menu there? That's new. I've done this setup so many times as I update very rapidly, as you can imagine. So I like to think I'm well equipped to spot when they change it up. It's 2025, it is month three. The day is the seven. Save that. Got our little robot sounds going. It is a bit of a bummer that it's not an in-place upgrade like it's been in the past, but they did note in the release notes that they changed quite a lot of things in this update and they fully admitted that they expect to see some things break in Pixie because it's such a big step up in architecture and really changing some of the foundation with this one. And so probably in a couple of weeks, we'll see Pixie 2502.1 come out and that'll be a bunch of patch fixes and a big batch. And that'll be an in-place.zip update that we can put in the archive manager. But for now, just a reminder to keep all your saves and states in sync thing, which just keeps your save safe and makes it easy to go between your devices. By the way, if you wanna see a video and how to set that up, let me know in the comments. Okay, the initial setup finally finished and wow, does this look different. We have quite a new UI here. We've got a whole grid system. I'm pretty sure it's not just a bunch of static images anymore. Like I'm, I'm able to go up, down, around. It's, it's, a whole, it's a whole thing going on here. Okay, so that's cool. Let's hop into my content and see what that's looking like. Perfect, it's grabbing my SD card two ROMs. And we have our collections, not favorites, but collections. So I can save things over in our apps. Looks like our usual suspects. And Fig is updated a bit. I see it's now connectivity. We have Wi-Fi, web services, and USB function all up in here. And I will turn on my SFTP file browser, my sync thing, as always. I'll join my Wi-Fi here. There we go, now I'm on my Wi-Fi, and I saved it using the profiles feature, which is super nice. So we have our HDMI output here, and we can change some settings. We'll be messing with that later. Lots of options there. Under interface options, I like to turn on the network indicator. I'm also, speaking of, really liking the top bar here. It looks a lot bigger and uh, just a little more friendly. Uh, almost, I guess, kind of more iPhone-like in a way. Love to see it. Under our power settings, we'll have our sleep function, which in the SP's case is the lid. I like for it to sleep for 10 and then shut down. That's exactly right. So great default option there. Let's see, we have our SD1, SD2 options there. And so at first glance, the main things that you'll probably notice is the different interface 
and uh, there's gonna be a lot of updates that'll need to happen to the available themes to support Pixie. I know they gave us a heads up in the themes chat on the MooOS Discord a couple of months ago, and I'm sorry to say I haven't updated my own yet, so I'll get on that hopefully soon. If you go on the MooOS release page, you're gonna see the massive list of every single change that was made, everything, tiny little bug fixes to compatibility fixes to minor core upgrades to major core upgrades and all that good stuff. So definitely take a look at that if you wanna see all the nitty gritty details. I like to look at the Discord announcement because it tells me kind of the really high level changes that are gonna be more noticeable and life changing, or at least my MooOS usage life, I guess. And yeah, I'm stoked on the UI improvements. I'm stoked on the addition of collections. And I think we need to try out that YouTube and Bluetooth app on here and then slide on over into that new console mode and see what that's all about. All right, so let's log into SFTP to go for the SP and then following the instructions C toop, we're going to grab our zip file and copy it right into SD1 MooOS task. So SD1 MooOS task, take that SH file. Oop, maybe let's extract that SH file first and then we'll upload, save, and there he goes. And then that'll be available from Application Task Toolkit. And then for Bluetooth, we're going to zip, don't unzip it. We're gonna put it in archive and then Bluetooth full install, install, device will auto reboot and it'll be available in applications. Cool beans. So let's go over to our archive, upload files, Bluetooth install, save that. And that's using the .muxupd, I believe that's new to Pixie, which is super cool. And so now back over on the SP, let's go to our apps and task toolkit. And we should see our, whoop, hey, C2 bloater Pixie. Try this thing out. It's doing things. It's talking to things. <laughs> Seems happy so far. Um, oh, okay, that was the installation. Now it's available in applications, okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey, hey, look at that. Ooh. Okay. Now I need to check the instructions. Press L1 to turn off and on keyboard. Hey, little known YouTuber, Coulter. Is there a space? There is a space. It's search is multi but I have to select. Oh, apparently I lost Wi Fi connection. Okay, so we will close out of this. Why did I lose internet? I don't know, but let's hop back in, shall we? Connectivity. Okay, back on the web now. I'm not sure what happened there. I have noticed that Pixie dropped my Wi-Fi a couple of times now. And so it might be that I was on the five gigahertz. Might just be a Pixie bug that they will resolve over time. But hopefully switching over to my 2.4 gigahertz will fix it up. Now I know we're on the internet. Search myself again, cause who of us isn't mildly narcissistic. Start. Oh, oh. None of those are me. That's some other guy, but hey. Oh, hey, that's me. It's loading. Oh, I think it was on the Discord. They mentioned that it's loading into like FLV or something. And so it's really slow. And so they want to switch it over to MPEG or something like that. But anyway, oh, oh my gosh. We're watching YouTube on the SP. That's cool. Got our play pause. I don't know what anything else does. I think I might just freaked it out a little bit. Yeah, so it's like loading the video data into into the stream. So they're talking about changing it up to something that'll play it faster. But that is YouTube on the SP. Apparently there's even a, a download function in there. So that's neat. We've got YouTube on the SP. Thank you very much, BC Yuong 1312. Let's try out your Bluetooth app now, shall we? So we'll go archive manager and full install. And this will reboot the handheld after it installs, apparently. It's gonna do its thing. Already rebooting, that was fast. All right, and we're off. Okay, now head over to apps and Bluetooth is now there. Glorious to see that logo on MooOS. Okay, we've got available and connected paired. Okay, let us at long last connect a Bluetooth controller to MooOS. We've got our mobile pad here, which you'll recognize from a couple of previous videos, notably invisible gaming setup. We'll hold this down, I think. Uh, turn it on, hold this down, question mark. There we go. Okay, so that's in pairing mode. Now over here, we're gonna go scan with Y. Point two's timeout, 10. Scanning, it's right here. Come on, buddy. Oh, oh, she sees him. Connect, connecting. Oh, the, why are there two? The mobile pad is the next one. I was wrong. <laughs> Wait, they have the same Mac address. Okay. Oh, it says connected. What? We've got Bluetooth. Oh my gosh, B to quit. I don't know how this works, but I think it's supposed to stay connected now, even though outside of the app. So if I hit B to quit, uh, oh, <laughs> I think this is 
set to an Xbox mapping, so this is B. Yeah. Okay, so does it keep us paired? Oh, it does. Oh my gosh, we have Bluetooth. That is freaking awesome. We've got Bluetooth and YouTube. What a wonderful day for MooOS. Okay, so now let's plug this thing into the TV and see what console mode looks like because we've got a freaking Bluetooth controller. And so if you've got a decent console interface, then we've got a full retro gaming console dockable on the go. Let's see what we got. All right, so let's plug this into my capture card here. Clip. And then, are there any special instructions? Plug in the HDMI cable and power on. Okay, so I think it's gonna auto detect it on startup. So let's just go ahead and reboot. Might mean we have to reset up the uh, Bluetooth, but that's okay. So it's rebooting. Okay, we got dark here. I'm thinking that means we've got something on capture card. Yes, we do. Okay, and yeah, it looks like it's in 480p. Okay, so go ahead and turn on the controller. Maybe he'll remember who he was talking to before. I don't know if that's how it works. I might have to turn on the Bluetooth app to do it. Okay, he's pulling. So let's flip back over to the Bluetooth app. Oh, it remembered. Oh, okay. Well, that's just fantastic. Oh, I just opened the Bluetooth app, but we can confirm. Hey, look at that, it's in there. Okay, well, let's close out of that. And then let's go to our resolution settings, general settings, HDMI output, resolution and let's go for so it's not going to go super crazy 720 at 60 i will save that save and will that take place right away or do we need to restart to see that in place nope that didn't change anything let's try unplugging and plugging back in no nope. okay so we'll go ahead and reboot the handheld hey he's bigger that's much more 720, hey, 720p, okay. That's freaking awesome. Okay, so the resolution settings work. I should be able just to tap this thing awake and it should auto connect. It says he's connected to something, I don't know what. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, when I open apps, it seems to reconnect Bluetooth just fine, but uh, right on the main screen, it doesn't, but that's okay. And then on regular TV, this would scale to full screen. So I'm just gonna do that manually here by dragging this content full screen. And now let's just try out a gamey game here. Let's just head on down to see what the SNES Super Nintendo Entertainment System vibes are. Let's try out some Aladdin. Mostly I'm curious if they have any default bezels on the TV mode here. So let's see what we got. Am I not pressing A to open? A to open. Uh, a to open. Oh, there we go. Okay, that was weird. Little temperamental on the Bluetooth maybe, but uh, we have Bluetooth, like that's huge. Kind of doubting that we're gonna see bezels. Um, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna have controller mapping right now. Oh, okay, so the easy swap here is if I change port one, map to port two, port two, map to port one. I think I had to do something like this on Newly or something, I think. So now if I resume, oh, and now we're in business. That's actually not too bad. I thought it would be a lot worse of a, uh, of a fix to make that work. The uh, analog stick isn't mapped, but it's Super Nintendo, so you, you didn't have an analog stick, unless you had a weird Mad Cats controller or something. But yeah, but yeah now we're full screen console gaming with a wireless Bluetooth controller in MooOS on the RG35XXSP. And I cannot seem to say that console name fast enough for it to not be so clunky. But yeah, this is a huge step forward because the console docked experience was a uh, big factor in duly uh, winning that category in my comparison between the two custom firmwares. And so I am super pumped to see this. I love seeing what the community is doing. Uh, like not only do we have Bluetooth, we have a YouTube app and people are adding box art scrapers and we've got more refined, mature resolution support and new UI navigation. And so, yeah, uh, I think to sum up what's new in MooOS Pixie, it's a whole lot of changes that will be super helpful going forward. Probably not one single feature that completely blows your socks off, but just like a whole lot of core improvements and tweaks that will be really beneficial in the long term of MooOS. And so I'm really pumped to see it. And let me know in the comments if you're going to flash this update to your handheld or if you already have and you're loving Pixie. And if so, did I miss your favorite new feature of Pixie or am I using it wrong or something? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to help out the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.